How's it going folks? It's Rob here. I've had Shay and a few other people on Facebook as well as um, some older clips that we've posted to YouTube wanting to know how the water flows around the system. Uh, they've just seen the earlier clips where the system was totally different. Basically the water was pumped to the fish tank and then via gravity went out to the grow beds via some pipe work and later on we threw on a radial flow filter and a few other bits and pieces. So what I thought I'd do is just take the camera, we'll nip on down to the sump tank where the uh, pump is situated and we'll follow the water as it splits from there one lot to the fish tank and another lot of water out to the grow bed. So here we go. Just quickly before we nip on down I'll just show you the overall layout. We have two 1000 litre tanks there and a series of filters that we'll get to in a minute. Then we have a grow bed here, just a single one by itself. And around the corner down here, we have a grow bed that sits on top of the sump tank down there. Then we have a grow bed in front of us here, and then another one there. So these three are sort of clustered in a bit of an L shape with the sump being the gathering point. And then we have that little satellite bed with those um, big bits of green sticking up over the back there. So. We'll just nip on down around these barrels and I'll show you the pump. I just, before I confuse anyone, these barrels here aren't set up to, in the system at the moment. Um, they're just going to be redesigned for another project. But anyway, we'll nip on around to the sump. So just around the front of the system here, we have a 300 litre grow bed over the top of the sump tank. The sump tank is roughly 600 litres, by the way, and is buried into the ground oh, roughly around about 20 centimetres or 8 inches. It's basically, you know, the chop and flip uh, configuration. You can run it as a single system all by itself if you want. Down inside here, though, powering the whole lot is a 10,000 litre an hour pump. Uh, it's connected to a 25 mil or one inch pipe with a barrel union. That barrel union just makes it easier to take the pump in and out for maintenance and whatnot. The pipe is 25 mil or one inch. It comes up to a T fitting there. And on the end of the T fitting, I have a couple of valves glued in. Now these PVC valves, they go straight onto the um, irrigation one inch or 25 mil nut and tails that you can buy from the hardware. So they're screwed on there with a washer inside to prevent leaks. And then onto those barbed fittings, I've just pushed on some of this reinforced one inch or 25 mil uh, hose. Um, I have seen people say that it uh, does perish after it's been in the sun for a while, but I haven't had any issues yet. And we've had it in the system for quite a few years now. Just wanted to point out that when you're working with um, the hose on the system, especially coming from the pump, you really should have some sort of a hose clamp on there to make sure it's not going to fly off. Um, in the case of aquaponics, I'd recommend using a 316 um, marine grade hose clamp. You just know that it's not going to rust and degrade that way. Um, I've got a few that aren't through the system like up in the fish tank and yeah they do tend to rust over time uh, as you can see here I've got none on this hose but as soon as I swap out the pump there will be a hose clamp going onto that fitting there so just a bit of a pointer it does pay especially on the pressure side of the build to have these hose clamps on there just down there you might be able to make out the little blue float that's actually a piggyback switch um, down over in my little power box over there the pump is plugged into the plug on the end of this float and what happens is once it falls over too far it trips the switch and the um, pump turns off. It just basically means that I don't uh, run a dry pump and burn it out. So it's at this point here that the water pretty much will split, hence a split flow. Uh, the water is split, uh, some going off to the fish tank and the rest going out towards the grow bed. So we'll just take the camera around the other side and I'll explain what all that plumbing's about. So just around here on the side of the sump, you can see we've got a line coming up here to a 25 mil valve. Um, they're just another cheap irrigation barb fitting you just slide your pipe onto. Then I've got a nut and tail. The reason this is here is I can basically turn off the grow beds and isolate them from the fish tank and just have the fish running by themselves if we want. Now up here we have the line coming through to the grow beds. Just to show you how easy it is to modify the system, when we added in the um, bed, the satellite bed, all I did was cut the line here, put in a T, put in another valve here, and then run a line down. I've drilled a, a hole actually in the timber here, um, in the little retaining wall sleeper, and pop the pipe in, or the hose in, and it runs out under the rocks over to that bed. Also too, I noticed I've got a little leak here that's developed uh, just with the Teflon tape not making a good enough seal. 
on this fitting so I've tried to tighten it up and it hasn't really stopped it it's a very slow drip so what I can do now is well after I finish filming um, I'll just turn this off undo all this uh, wrap some more Teflon tape around that and away we go so uh, it's very easy to work on systems when you're turning off water flow as easy as that just around the corner here we can follow this line to another T um, this T here is one that sends water out to the main grow beds so we've got a T section here that allows me to put on a section of pipe up to this valve and this valve then regulates the flow into this grow bed down here I had a line coming off to these barrels because these barrels are out of use I've basically turned off the valve here and put a stopper in the end of the nut and tail fitting and that's going to stop any leaks forming um, also too you know if any kids come along and turn this on uh, no water's going to come shooting out here this was connected just to the barrels through this fitting here so just a nice and easy way to um, keep it tidy this line that goes off to the other grow beds you can see I've got a nut and tail fitting there again that's there so I can remove this line, uh, stick the garden hose down there and blow out any muck that does accumulate in the system. You always find you get some solids accumulate in this pipe, even the PVC pipe. So it's good to be able to um, remove as much as you can and clean it out when needs be. So we'll run around the other side of the grow beds and pick up the plumbing from there. So this is where the hose comes from the behind the sump tank, just down around here. And as you can see, another nut and tail so I can undo it and stick a hose down there and blow it out. Then we have a barbed T-joiner. This valve here controls the bed above me with the monster parsley. And the other one sends off a line. You can see the valve if I just move down this aloe vera. You can see the valve just there. Um, and that controls the flow into this bed here. So you can see where the hose comes up into a 90 degree barbed elbow. I haven't worried about any clamps on there because there's no real pressure. And then into another 90 degree barbed elbow. And then down into this little 90 mil or I think it's three and a half inch PVC pipe. The reason I have this here is I did have a little uh, foam matting in here that was supposed to take out any fine solids, but yeah, it just didn't work out, so I took it out. So that's pretty much all how they're plumbed up. Um, I'll just take you over to the other bed that's sitting by itself. Over there where the hose comes off where that blue tap was, I've just got the hose drilled through the side of a retaining wall and it's coming down under the rock here got a big rock just to stop it from moving and then it's just up the side of the grow bed and the same little double 90 degree um, joiners at the top just so it can flow down into the grow bed this one here though um, if you look under the monster beat oh, a bit hard to see but I have no PVC there um, it just goes straight into the bed itself now for the water going into the uh, fish tank we'll nip around the other side back to the sump we're just back at the sump tank now and this is the hose that comes off the top of the PVC pipe that's attached to the pump and it goes around down there onto the ground and we join it up here where it's split here in a Y we have um, one section of it come off down here to a little venturi that I can control through this tap and that's just in the base of this moving bed biofilter so that's supplying a bit of um, oxygen or air and also movement to the biometer in there the other line comes down along here and they're split off in another Y there. Comes up here again, another valve, another um, nut and tail fitting onto the PVC that runs into the fish tank. And then the hose from that Y section again comes along the ground here and I've branched it off again. Uh, the extra water will probably go into a raft bed. I'll use that um, green trough for. Anyway, it comes up here, another nut and tail then up to another valve and then another nut and tail you can tell i really like the nut and tails and then on the inside of the tank we have a venturi which is supplying oxygen to the surface of the water uh, it's actually just below the surface of the water it's also um, creating a current uh, to spin the water in the fish tanks as well and what that does is it pulls all the solids to the center which then get picked up this solids overflow pipe or outlet pipe which are then taken out this pipe here and then down here and into a drain it's a communal drain um, the same solids lifting outlet is on the other side of this one here there we go just over there all the solids come down and then into a radial flow just quickly though while we're here I'm also running uh, air into these guys here mainly because I've had a couple of pumps fail and when a pump fails basically your um, blackout backup doesn't work you've got no water circulation no way to know it's gone off other than you can um, not hear the Venturi's running so I now have an airline 
I'm going into each tank and they've both got air stones. Where are we? About this size and they're running off a four and a half thousand litre an hour compressor. So I now have air going into both tanks. So if I do have another pump burnout, my fish have got O2, which yeah, hopefully won't happen again. So anyway, uh, back to the water flow. The water flow with all the crap and crud then comes down here into my radial flow filter, which I've just cleaned out earlier. Um, the design of the radial flow filter is pretty basic. You have water going in at the base, down in there, up a standpipe, and then you have a cowling around the outside, which diverts the water, changes its direction. It then has to go down around the outside of the cowling um, or the cover. And as it changes direction, uh, the velocity slows again and you end up with a lot of solids that precipitate out into the base. And I have a little drain fitting down there that I can then whack my pump on or just use gravity just to siphon all the, um, the crud out uh, once every, or well, ideally, once every week and a half to two weeks. But yeah, during summer with high feed rates and a lot of fish, I've been doing it weekly. So the water, once it's um, gone down through there, changed direction and all the solids have fallen out, uh, it comes out through the top here into the moving bed biofilter. I've got a little grate here that stops all this um, biomedia going back into there. Um, please keep in mind, you do not need one of these if you have enough grow beds. Um, if you've got enough biomedia in there to house the bacteria, to do all the, um, the processing of the ammonia and the nitrites, you do not need one of these. I've got one of these because of an extremely high stocking rate in um, my fish tanks. I've got uh, pretty much well 50 plus fish at over 500 grams in there. And I think I'm down to about 12 or so uh, jade perch around the kilo mark in there. So I have a lot more waste than my four beds here can handle. That's why I have this. If you're just a sensible person in the backyard with an IBC with say 30 to 36 um, jade perch in there or silver perch in there, all you'll need is um, three of these grow beds um, cut at about 300 high with 20 mil or um, um, 20 mil or what's that three quarter inch sorry rock suitable rock that is and uh, or um, this clay bees in there and that will handle the biofiltration for those fish until they're ready to harvest then you take them out at around about 500 grams or a pound so yeah um, please don't think you need to go out and make one of these I've had a few people um, tell others that yeah Rob reckons you need one of these you don't um, yeah I just went over the top Plus, um, these filters came with the fish tanks when I bought them from, from Mr. Paul Van, so, um, you know, it was silly not to use them. So I'll just move all my junk from on top of here. From the moving bed biofilter, the water then comes into a bit of a swirl or settling tank. I've got it so the water um, goes down on a bit of a swirl. I don't know if you can pick up all the crud on the bottom, but there's a fair bit of crud around there. And then it goes out through the top here. Ideally, this should be a radial flow filter, another one that will just collect all the fine solids that pass through the biofilter or are the fine solids created by the biofilter because there's millions or trillions of bacteria living on all that biomedia. They create solids and yeah, they've got to go somewhere. So if this was another filter, yeah, it definitely would be a good idea. And from there, this water here then goes down into the sump. So never touches the grow beds directly, it goes down into the sump tank where it's circulated and then the flow is split again and you've got some going to the grow beds and some going to the fish tank. So that's basically the setup. I'll just run through the electrical side of how we've got it all hooked up. Down there I've got a waterproof outdoors box. In there, as you saw before, I've got the power board with the pump and the piggyback switch that controls the little float switch. That's in there along with um, another two plugs there just for the heaters. One goes into the sump tank over that way and one through this wide extension cord goes up to the jade perch tank. I've only used them, oh, probably, I don't know, probably 15, 20 times at the most this year. That's the heaters. And I only put them on um, around about sundown and I turn them off about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. So that's just to um, give a little bit of supplemental heat on those really cold mornings where it dips below freezing here. Just down there, you can see the yellow extension cord. That's what uh, powers the board in the box there. Um, just down in here, you can probably see a black little bit of irrigation pipe just where I've slipped it over the top of the cord just so it doesn't get damaged as it runs under the rocks there and into the base of my little cupboard. So this little cupboard holds all the electrical gizmos. We'll just pop around and give you a bit of a look. 
So over here is the main power. Um, I had a Sparky come out, <laughs> he made me dig the trench. Um, but we've got a main power down here to the aquaponics. Uh, it's just an outdoor plug and one runs into a power board within this box here. Um, inside this box we have all the bits and pieces. Up on the top shelf we have a DC backup air pump. It's just sitting up the back there, suspended on a couple of rails so it doesn't vibrate and make a big noise. Um, it's actually not connected to these two batteries at the moment because I've been mucking around with um, splicing some more air lines in from that into the existing ones in the tank just so I don't have lots of hoses running around the place. A uh, bit of goldfish food here, this is just something for the new fish in the barrel system and also for the fish in the pond. Over here, just, you know, bits and pieces, screwdriver, um, toothbrush for cleaning. These are my little jars I use to put the different pH buffers in, just to calibrate the pH pens. Down here, um, stainless steel screws in a jar, odd bits of pipe and um, ties and whatnot. Uh, Blue Lab pH uh, pen and old pen thermometer and also EC. And I've got the seaweed powder we use up the back and also some calcium carbonate I was using to help buffer the alkalinity in the system but I got some shells and um, crushed shell and coal in there at the moment. Here is the iron that we use, um, it's a, um, what is it, EDTPA iron, so it's bioavailable for the plants to use at the pH and the range we're running at the moment. Just the power board, down the bottom there is just the air pump, I actually need to upsize that because I'd like a little bit more air running through the system old pH pens and calibration liquid, more liquid over the side here. Just extension cord that runs the um, pump over here in the barrel ponic system. I suppose I should probably run through the fish we've got, um, seeing not everyone who's watching this would have seen our channel before. Uh, in this tank here, 1000 litre, 260-ish gallon, we have 50 plus silver perch, up to around about 500 grams in size. There might be one or two a little bit over. Um, over in this tank here, we have 12 left of our original 60 or so jade perch. There actually may be more than 12 in there now, I come to think of it. I may not have done my sums right, but these guys here, as soon as they're um, all taken out and being cooked up, half of the fish from this tank here will be going into there. So we have roughly 25 fish in each tank. Uh, in the future, I really don't want any more than 60 fish in the system at any one time. The idea is, is to have one tank populated with fish we're harvesting from, while the other tank has new fish growing out to size. I think in the future we'll pretty much well stick with the jade perch. So these little split flow systems are very easy to make. I mean, I've overcomplicated this one by having an extra fish tank and also putting in the um, moving bed biofilter or bioreactor, but that's due to the heavy stocking density with having all the fish in the fish tank. So if you want to have a look at a pretty basic little split flow system that I've built, you can check out this little clip up there. It's um, a system I built Michael out at Save Your Soil Permaculture at Laidley. Now with these systems, I do think it's a good idea to have a minimum of uh, exchange rate in your fish tank of at least two times an hour. So for a thousand litre fish tank what you'd want is two thousand litres of water going through there every hour and that way the water has ample opportunity to go through your biofilters which are pretty much well just your grow beds. So the water does need to go through there so the ammonia and the nitrite can be converted into the fish friendlier nitrate so yeah, you do need a little bit of an increased uh, water flow through the system when you're looking at something like this. So as to why I've called this a split flow system, just so people don't think I'm trying to reinvent the wheel, um, I saw a clip ages ago by Dr. Nate Story where he's talking about um, splitting the flow in the system so you can isolate your fish from your grow side of things and I pretty much will run with that. Uh, when you speak to two or three people a week who have no real idea on aquaponics, I'm trying to explain using the acronyms that are floating around out there um, how my system is set up gets rather confusing. It's a lot easier to explain to people you split the flow from the sump tank to the grow beds and then to the fish. It just makes life a lot easier and they can grasp it a lot better. Just quickly, some of the benefits that I see in a system like this is being able to um, work on the beds with the water still going through the fish, like I mentioned before, just by turning off a few valves. Also too, um, when it comes to maintenance time, I can undo those little nut and tail jobbies, pull out those hoses, flush them out with the garden hose, all the while the water's running through the fish side of things still. 
Uh, another point to mention is if you're in a cooler climate, you can isolate the grow beds from the fish at night time. And what that means is you've just got water coming through the fish, your filters, the sump tank can back round again. It isn't flooding and draining through um, the grow beds and falling through the night air into the sump tank. Just keeps the uh, water temperature up a few degrees. So that might be something to consider as well if you're trying to work out which way to go with the system. So as you can see, it's, it is a pretty straightforward design except for the addition of the bio filter and the other um, secondary sump tank there. You know, it is a pretty straightforward setup. It's something anyone can do in their backyard. Um, the round tanks, I really do like having them as the fish tanks just because they do tend to pull the solids to the center, but you don't need them. You can use the square IBCs and they probably work out a lot cheaper than those guys. I was just lucky and got them second hand. So if you've enjoyed the clip and you want to see more of our aquaponic ones, hit that little subscribe button up there and you'll be sent a notification whenever we post a clip to YouTube on aquaponics or other bits and pieces or noisy lorikeets in our backyard. Uh, there's also those two um, clips there on the chop and flip barrel and IBC if you want to suss them out. So I'll also put a card at the end of the clip that has a couple of hot links on thumbnails or just to different aspects of the build. I won't pop them up here. Um, things like um, how we've uh, filled up grow beds, radial flow filter and the backup air and you can suss them out if you want. I do hope everyone is well and happy and that you have got something out of the clip and I will catch you next time. Cheers folks! Now, on these, they've all got nut and tail fitting so I can screw and unscrew them. Uh, it just makes altering the job so much easier. Um, everything's loose. Well, there you go. Maybe you should check your pipes more often, Rob. I wonder why that is. How embarrassment. <laughs>